<laughs> so if you're here, you've probably watched the <clears throat> first blending textures video, and we're going to talk about uh, kind of moving into, moving into building shaders out of this. And so the first part is uh, just starting out once again, we've got this same setup here. I've switched to a different material, but um, we've got the same two dirt tiles coming in. Uh, we've got our blend colors and we have our noise remapped into that. And you know, same situation, except now I've got a, I have just a single light here and you know, the ability to render uh, something that I may want to render. And it should go pretty quickly here. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Right. Obviously, I've got an IBL in there, but it um, doesn't really matter. So this is our texture that we're starting with. Um, now, if we really wanted to build a shader out of this, we'd need to have um, multiple uh, files loaded, um, multiple blend colors, and we want everything to be sort of very consistent. So the way to go ahead and do this is, you know, you'll, you'll build your, um, your bump and your... Um, other shaders as you need. Uh, for example, here I have um, in my dirt one, I have a diffuse map here. I've also got a, um, a bump map here uh, that I can use and there's you know, a couple other maps, things like that. Uh, so the way that we want to go ahead and do this is to um, grab our file textures. So actually we can create two new file textures, but this is, there's an easier way to do this. I want to grab these. Um, and I want to say file, I'm sorry, edit, duplicate with connections. And this does something really delightfully magical, right? Which is to create a new copy of our file texture nodes and connect it to our original place 2Ds. So now if we decide that we need to change our repeat patterns, um, it's going to ripple through this and this, right? And and if I need to change the repeat patterns for my other file texture, like here I've shot five and seven, they'll ripple between this and this. Now, if you went ahead and, and didn't copy them this way, and that's just, remember that's duplicate file, duplicate with connections, right? Um, if you went ahead and, and accidentally imported them already, which we can do uh, like this, I can bring in, uh, Dirt 1 and Dirt 2, right? I can just drag them in. And when you do that, it, it creates, you'll see here, it creates another place 2D. And if we uh, hide this, if we go ahead and graph all of these, you'll see that they've been created with their own place 2Ds, right? Which, um, which doesn't do what we were hoping to do, right? And you could bring those in and, and you could set this one. Let's see which one is this? This is. Dirt one, dirt one, and that's dirt one. So we could go ahead and say, okay, that's five. So I can come down here and I can switch this to five. Uh, but that's just going to be a, a problem because if we ever need to change this, uh, we are going to run into a serious issue. So the best way to manage this is to go ahead and just delete these. And as, as long as you're make sure that you're using the, the correct, um, you're matching them up correctly. So if I look at file two here and see, this is where naming really helps. See, that's dirt tile two. So I can say dirt two diffuse. And if I look at this one, oh, this is dirt tile one. So this is dirt one bump and dirt two bump. And this is dirt two diffuse. So now I can easily see, obviously, where my two sit. And so I'm just going to rearrange these uh, for now and place them like this. So I'm going to come up here and grab my place 2D and I'm going to drop it on here and just say default. And I'm going to do the same for this one, default. Now we're, in, we're back to where we began if, if we duplicated with connections. And we have uh, the same setup here, which is delightful, right? Now I'm doing this with a bump map because there is one little aspect of the blend colors which isn't too great. And I'm going to go ahead and um, create a new blend colors node. That's in utilities, blend colors. 
And I'm going to place that here and put this uh, dirt two goes into blend colors two, right? So two and one. Dirt one to one and dirt one to one. All right, so we will make sure that we're doing it all the same way. And, and the other thing we can do here is that we want to maintain uh, the fact that the mix happens the same way as well. So we're going to go ahead and grab this and drop it onto our second blender. And I can call this um, blender bump and this one blender diffuse. That makes it a little bit easier to follow. So now what we've got is a great little network where all of our dependencies are shared, right? So if we change our mixer, if we change the way we tile, um, everything we may change is now shared between all those things that need to be changed. So in this manner, we're, we're saving ourselves work for the future um, just by taking a little bit of time to set it up now. Now for the bump map, one thing that we'll notice here is that if I drop this onto here and set to standard overall bump, right? We don't get a very good option for setting our bump, right? And what happens is this creates this bump 2D. Um, and the reason for that is because we, um, let me back that out. We, uh, this doesn't pass on the alpha channel, so it doesn't know how to hook it up. Uh, and, and a lot of times when you're building these bump maps, um, you're saying alpha is luminance, right? Because you're, you want to select the values in here that are, um, you know, the color values that, the, the, yeah, the color values are actually generating your bump values. So knowing that, that it's just the luminance that's generating the bump map, um, we can actually look at any of the channels. You know, for example, test texture. Um, if we look at any of our channels, display red channel um, if Maya didn't actually color this in a horrible way um, you'd notice that all of these channels would actually have the same value inside of them they'd look all the same luminance and uh, RGB would be exactly the same and, and they are so what we can do is we can create our own bump our own bump which is in uh, utilities bump 2d and when we drag and drop it other we can see that our output here is we only get output rgb and so what we can do is we can take our rg one of these values and send it right over to our bump value which is where it goes and now we've effectively created the exact same connection we needed and we can go ahead and drop this onto here and say standard bump and that will uh, create a bump map for us. I'm sorry, I guess I meant overall bump. You should see, there's our bump values coming in. And so ultimately, that will create our bump value, let's see. Save that. Let's see if we get. So there's our obviously horrendous bump values because we have it set to default of one. I'm going to go ahead and IPR this and alter it. Notice that some of these things don't actually get shoved to the viewport 2.0, and that's just because the, the blend colors does sort of affect that uh, stuff. So we can just pop in a value that's actually logical. Um, much much lower than um, one and we get sort of our bump map and this is sort of the process that you'd go to generate a shader and that's what I've gone ahead and done here is you can notice and I think I actually didn't quite do it all the way as I said let's look at this full screen you can see that while I do have my shared items there. I don't have my shared items here. So I don't know what I was thinking when I set this up thinking, oh, well, I'll just tell everyone how to do this. 
Um, let me get rid of this. And you can see how quickly this goes together once you sort of know what you're looking for. Default, and then I can go ahead and get rid of these and do the same here. Default, default, default. And now, I mean, this is a really nice setup where we have um, so many different files uh, dependent only on um, two different place 2Ds and all the blends are driven by a single remap which means that any change that we make to these things will ripple through uh, very effectively to uh, everything. Um, and so the effect of this shader is it's not really major. Um, let's see here we are. Just a pretty straightforward um, shader here but you can see how we can back away pretty nicely and get a view of everything that we're going to get um, that lack of repetition. We're getting a pretty uh, good distance covered here. Um, we've got a variety of shaders working together um, and everything happens uh, fairly nicely. So that's pretty much it for this video. In the next video, I do want to talk about um, using different methods of getting these blends together and we're going to see some really amazing stuff uh, to make sure that you can uh, not just have coverage but do some sort of detailed blending uh, throughout all right and I'll see you then shut up and sit down